Got it. All right. Um, we are recording. It is uh, December 26th, 2021. Merry Christmas. So probably, be, yeah, this is this is our Christmas episode. So um, hope you all had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I think this will be the last show of the year. And then it'll be 2022. And things are going to be great in 2022. It's going to be so much better in 2022. Yeah. Yeah, how are you doing, Kirk? I'm doing pretty well. I, you know, had a good Christmas. Um, uh, ate a lot. Nice. Drank a bit. Got some some cool things um, for Christmas. What'd you get? What'd you do? Oh well, I got some of these. Um, this is my Christmas gift this year. Was some of these new slippers. So I traded in the bunny slippers for these cat foot. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> You know, the, um, the sole just fell off of, of my slippers, so I have to get new ones. Oh, damn. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm still tough. wearing them. Yeah, so that was my Christmas gift there. The that's one, good. It wasn't my Christmas gift to myself. Which is, hmm. <laughs> I told you I built that. Um, maybe I'll dig it out in a minute because it's, it's in, the, in the synth here. I built this uh, uh, Surge Resonant EQ. Right, for your Eurorack. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like a 10 band equalizer. It's like 10, um, or actually it's eight band pass filters that are all spaced uh, a major seventh apart, right? So instead of like 100 hertz or 1,000 hertz or 500 or whatever, or an octave, they're, they're spaced, you know, in, in major sevenths, right? That way they don't overlap and, or they don't, um, uh, focus on particular frequencies because they overlap in weird ways, right? And then okay. the two the two outer filters are just a high pass and low pass. Okay. And then the eight in the middle are um are band pass filters, right? And then the filters are like kind of synth filters. So they have a little bit of resonance as you turn them up, you know? Okay. So it's kind of a cool module. You know, it's uh it's uh kind of like a good like post processor so you do you get a good sound going and then you send it through the uh through the resonant eq and you can kind of tweak the the knobs to get like bring out frequencies or kind of cut frequencies in certain areas you know okay cool did you use it in your your song of the week attache case no i didn't no i, I didn't do that i just you know what i did actually with that song um is uh because now you're talking about the song right so um, the last couple of weeks, I just made lots of guitar tracks and I layered the guitar tracks, you know, this time I, I recorded a bunch of tracks, but I deleted everything. And I just have like two guitars and a bass and then drums. So I just stripped it down. It's like the bar band song. Okay. <laughs> well, it was cool. It was very spy, you know, like spy music kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I was, I was trying to go for that vibe. Yeah. You know? Did you use any um, any effects on on the on the recording? You know, I should have and I didn't. I said I was going to do that and I didn't do it. Mm. I used this. The um, oh, did you? Yeah, oh, I use cool. it on guitar and I use it on the, of course, the the micro free. So. Um, oh yeah, I got hear it. I got mine up here. Let me go get it. I should use this. I just saw this this morning. I, actually, you reminded me. I just saw this up on the shelf this morning and I was like, oh, I should get that out and use it for something. It's really great with the synth. Um, the four second delay. Yeah. And the tap tempo thing is awesome. Um, that, that makes it really usable. Um, yeah. Do you use, it's got the high pass and low pass filter. Do you use those? Yes. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing with them. Um, I just kind of, you know, um, yeah. like, Play it by ear. Once I get a sequence going, I just I start turning knobs on the synthesizer and on the on the the delay pedal, and uh, sometimes on the Volca if I have that going as well. But um, yeah, this is just so people know this is uh, this is the a four second digital delay, right? So it goes up to four seconds. It's got a tap tempo, you know, um, and then it has you know time repeats and level, and then it has a high pass and a low pass filter, right? And this is by, it's like a DIY project by the Electric Druid. So look mm. up Electric Druid. And I think he calls it the Digi Delay. Digi Delay, okay. Yeah, 
He just sells it as a circuit board. So it's a single circuit board. It's a pretty easy build, but it has a couple chips on it that are not standard like guitar stuff. So, it, you know, it uses like some TLO72 op amps and a couple of like standard things, but then it also uses a three volt uh, voltage regulator. And so you got to order that. And then um, there's a couple other chips, but I think you can, there's some memory chips too, like digital memory it uses for the delay. Oh, cool. Okay. You know, so you got to order that special. And then I think there's like another chip on there that's like a little microcontroller for the tap tempo, but he sells that. Okay. So I think if you buy, I, I forget exactly what I did, but I think when I bought the, the circuit board from him, I got the extra chips, the special chips along with it. Okay. I'm going to, um, I'm going to look that up and I'll put the description or I'll put the a link in the description because I'm actually thinking I kind of want another one of those. So I might uh, build one since you said it's easy. Yeah. It's relatively not a hard project. I got my soldering iron, so it wasn't oh, a Christmas awesome. present, but um, I figured I'd open it up on on the air here <laughs> oh yeah live, unboxing. live on the yeah people love unboxings right yeah right okay, let's see what we got it's like the asmr we should just do that we should do an episode where we're just working yeah <laughs> as long as we keep talking i think that'd be okay okay so here it is the new soldering station awesome you can tell it's from China because it doesn't have any English writing on it. <laughs> so this is the second one. UPS lost the first one and um, I have to file a claim on that. But I just decided I'd order another one because I'd have to anyways. Okay, so this is really cool. It's got the little, little, uh, kind of base so this is the old uh you know the control center and then it's got the separate wand thing um and there's a little stand oh, did that i think it's going to mount did it come with That's... the solder sucker yeah oh you know what those are actually really useful i have one of those and I kind of like in the past, I never, I've, I kind of always panned it and didn't think it was a good idea. And then I finally got one and I was like, why haven't I got, why didn't I get this sooner? Cause it works really good. I have a use for it. I, I still have to um, take apart my, uh, um, um, what, what's the pedal I was working on? The range master. And I have to reverse some of the parts on it. And uh, it's been really difficult to do. Um, so I think this will this will help a lot. Yeah, here's I, I opened up the digi delay, right? So here's the whole thing. It's basically just one circuit board, right? So it's pretty mm -hmm. easy. Like you just do everything on the circuit board. The pots all mount to the circuit board, and then the, it's just got two little. You have to you don't. It doesn't use the three pole switches. It just uses like a momentary switch right with two tabs so it's the wiring is pretty easy so this is a pretty easy okay. project to build i call it like medium just because the board's pretty big and there's a lot of parts you know but the actual offboard wiring is pretty simple on this cool you know yeah i recommend okay. this project too it does like here's a note to everybody it does have a weird quirk that if you turn it on you'll hear a bunch of noise sometimes do you ever hear that um Usually it's been off long enough that it's kind of emptied out because I think that's what it is. I think it's like, it's, 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 it's playing back the noise from the, you know, from the last time it was on, if it's a long repeat. Yeah. That's what the guy told me. I asked him about it. I was like, did, did I make a mistake here? And he's like, well, no, when you start it up, the, the digital memory is in a random state. So like it doesn't mm. clear the memory. It's just kind of like the 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 memory chip is just kind of a, a bunch of random ones and zeros, right? And so that manifests audibly as as noise, uh -huh. and then that starts working its way through the um, through the delay system. So if you have repeats up high, you'll hear the noise. Okay. Until it well, you, out. Uh, that yeah, that's totally understandable. 
um, I actually keep mine on all the time. Oh, well, no wonder you don't hear it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, because it'll only like, like, here's what it'll manifest as you turn the thing on and you hear the noise and then it goes away. Right. Right. So and you could like, make it go away faster by turning down the, the delay time. Yeah. Or the repeats. Right. Yeah. So if you turn repeats down all the way, then it'll just go sh once and be gone, you know? Yeah. So, so it's not a bit, it's not a deal breaker, you know? It'd be bad though if your power went, you're in the middle of a gig and the power went off and on. Right. <laughs> that would be bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think if you're, if you're playing a gig and it, it is a big deal, like if, if that would have been a big deal for you and you're playing a gig, you probably have redundant power. Like <laughs> if you're the Rolling Stones, you're not going to have like a, a power outage that affects your, your signal. Yeah. Yeah. But you might have one at the bar. That's true. That's true. You know, someone kick or that well, that guy, that painter is going to kick my power plug out like three times, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that yeah. happened. That was like terrible. <laughs> it was not, he was not doing me any favors. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember who it was. Somebody who, um, somebody that I played with, they, um, they had a problem with somebody stepping on their, their tuner i think it was or some they step on, somebody else would come and step on their pedal and like the, the, like their signal would go away and they'd look around it's like oh somebody just stepped on my tuner and <laughs> went into bypass so they put a like a dummy pedal <laughs> <laughs> so they would step on the other pedal and oh not that's the tuner. funny that's great good one yeah because <laughs> you know it once you step on it that you did it yeah yeah right oh that's super funny you know yeah so so anyway yeah so this is a good project you know I, i'd recommend anybody to do this one i got some new circuit boards made too so um here's this new board i got here actually i got like three new boards so oh. this one this is the the ube screamer but uses the 4069 chip oh uh, okay and this is the 22 sevenths with the six four oh six nine chip. Okay, I see you've gotten started on that one. Actually, I'm going to do another un unboxing, although it's not a box, it's an envelope. <laughs> an, un an opening. Yes. So, and you can you can tell us what we're looking at. Okay. So this board could this board be one of those that you just finished? Uh, maybe. I'll show you that what it one is. of these though it, it, that one's probably the 4049 version okay what color is it it's blue yeah it's one of the 4049 boards okay there it is oh nice yeah so that's the ube screamer is that the same one that you were just showing yeah yeah it's it's like this one except it uses a different chip in the middle. Oh, okay. It uses, it uses the 4049 hex inverter instead of the 4069 hex inverter. Right. You know? All right, cool. So yeah, another. Here's another one. I was working with Steve on this one. This is a, a board for this thing called the pulse width modulator, you know? Um, and I made this, but I realized later I've got the boards for it. And then I realized I maybe have to redesign it because it, it, it was made to use these pots right here. So they have the little pins that come out the side there. And so the pots would go into the board like this and the board will mount inside the box like this, right? I don't have a, okay. uh, maybe I do have one, like it'll go in one of these boxes but standing up you know okay like this right so it'll be it'll be standing up and the pots will come out through the top you know but then i realized like this style of pot with the with the nine millimeter like the small pot with the with the pins coming out the side they don't make the, or i can't get these in the right values it's kind of limited, like Tida only has these in certain values, like 100K or 50K, but they don't have them in 500K. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. Um, I might have to replan this around a different pot 
like that's a different size, you know, where I can get the values I need. I don't know. So that was kind of uh, disappointing. I should have thought about it before I designed it, but hmm. I thought I'd be able to get these in any value, but I can't, it seems like I can't get the 500 K ones. Yeah. That's pretty weird. Yeah. So I have a question about that one. What is that notch that you have? Oh, okay. That's board. a really great question. So, so the idea here is this, let me go get the, uh, the box here, right? So, so what's going to happen is the jacks will go in the sides like this, and then it'll have two stomp switches on the top here and here. And then the pots will come out in a row on this edge. And then I need a place to put the power jack. So the power jack is going to go in the back here, right? And if the circuit board sits inside the box like, like this, I don't know if you can see that there. Yep then I need room for the power jack to come through. Very interesting. Right, because the switches will be here and here, and then the jacks will be in the middle on the ends. And so there isn't a lot of room left on the sides here. So what I did is I made the notch there and then the jack will come through the notch, right? It's or a real ship my... in a bottle. It is a little bit like that, yeah. Yeah, I tried to plan it out very carefully. This is in this, I think this would have worked you know, um, it might still work, you know, um, it's just that the, I can't get the pots in the right value. So I thought I'd had some too, but I, I don't, I have a, I have two that might work here. I have 200 K pots, but then I need a, I need a 500, I need two 500 K pots and I don't have them in that size. So I don't know. We'll see, you know, I'll have to look around and see what I can find, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that it sounds like a yeah def, definitely a, a real supply chain issue, but um, <laughs> maybe something that they don't don't even manufacture. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They they must make it. You know, they if you if you I'm sure someone would make it for you if you ordered like five thousand of them. Right. <laughs> like two. Yeah. <laughs> ten. I'd buy ten. You know, right? You know. Yeah, I bet they wouldn't make you ten. No, no, they're not gonna make me 10. I, you know, the reason I, I wanted to do this because Steve kind of, I was gonna just put one stomp switch on it and do it this way, right? And that would have been no problem, would have been done. Mm -hmm. And Steve was like, we need two stomp switches. So I don't like it when the two stomp switches are in portrait and they're mm -hmm. so close together. So instead, I, I like it like this with the two switches on either end because it's kind of like an amp switcher, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right, you know what I mean? Or like one of those amp, like um you know pet, or the amp switch for the reverb and tremolo or something like that right mm -hmm. or you know it's got a good spacing right here right so this right. would have been good for me like ergonomically so i planned this out but then it made a tight fit for everything else so i thought well i'll use these little tiny pots and make it fit but then i i didn't think to check to see if i could get the values or not until after i got the boards in the mail what's the value you're looking for on the on the pot you know, I need a, I think I need a, a 10K and two 500K pots. And so I have a 10 uh, and a 100 here, but then I need two 500K. Okay. You know, maybe I could use something else. I don't know. Yeah. I, w I was wondering if there's a, some way that you could kind of use a, a regular 10K pot and then just wire it over to the, the board instead of having it plugged directly in. You could. Yeah, you could. You know, I have I, I have some of these little tiny. These are like the smallest like pots with little solder legs on them. You know, and mm -hmm. I have a couple of these that are 500k. So I was going to use these maybe just to test and see if the board works, but these don't quite fit as tightly inside the box. They kind of sit a little more outboard from the circuit board. They're not as close in. You know, so right. it kind of rearranges how everything fits in the box. You know, we'll see. I'll have to experiment. Yeah. Well, maybe somebody knows, like if, if you, you know, find out through uh, message boards or if somebody wants to make a comment on, on this video, if they know of where to get that part, um, yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah. I made like 10 boards. I got like 10 of these. I'm going to give, I did it for Steve. So I'm going to give Steve half of these, you know, and then we can build them up, you know, um, and talk about it. This is version one. So, you know, you know, it's beta. We're just beta testing. <laughs> right. So, um, 
let's talk about what does the pulse width modulator do? Uh, it's kind of in the vein of the ugly face. It's a little bit different, but it's similar. Okay. Basically, your guitar signal goes in, and then it turns it into a square wave, and then the distance between the the, the peaks or the rising and falling edge is modulated. Right. right? So um, so it changes the the width. Like it basically takes your your signal going in. Um, squares it off, turns it into a, just a full square wave, right? So, and, th and, then, and then it modulates the distance, like, you know, the, of the, you know, the, it, it changes the, the on time of the square wave, I guess you should say. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, that makes pretty, sense to me. it's pretty distorted. Like, it's a lot like the ugly face, you know, different, has its own character, but it's, it's similar. You know, interesting, and it, has, and it has a um, it has like a volume control, and then there's a like a pulse width knob that sets the the width, and then there's two other knobs. One's the depth, and one's the the rate, and that determines like it has a little LFO that changes the pulse width, you know, so it kind of animates it. So it's a little bit like a like a, the ugly face and a phase shifter, right? Is the um, distortion necessary to hear that sound, or could, can you turn down the distortion and still hear the the modulation of the pulse width? Oh well, okay. So it's kind of like it turns your your signal into like a digital signal. So you're it's either on or off. So there's no okay. like there's no dynamic. It's just like you know anything that's going in gets turned into like a massive square wave. I see. Okay. Yeah. So it'll sound like an analog synthesizer. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it's only like when you're playing, you know, so it does it does it gates pretty good, you know, but but it's just okay. on or off, you know, there's no dynamic. There's no subtlety. Right. There's no emotional expression. Is it music? You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Um, what did I, where did I read this? Um, vocal or instrumental sounds or both combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. It says and, so yeah. If, if it isn't beauty of expression, then, then I don't know. Maybe it isn't music. Well, we'll have to make one and see how beautiful it is, you know? Right, and style. beauty is in the ear of the beholder, as they say. True. Yeah. True. Like, who am I to tell you what's beautiful? You know, like I would never, I would never take that on myself. You know, right. It's it's by this guy Tim Escobedo. He's kind of a an anomaly. Like way back in the early days of the DIY stomp box era, like he was this totally creative guy. Came up with all these like cool little circuit ideas, and he had a website where he published just like this, the you know schematics. You know for these ideas, you know, um, called circuit snippets. You can still find it. It's like super popular. Like people really dig it. Like a lot of people have borrowed ideas from him, but he never produced anything himself. Hmm. So I think he just sat around with a breadboard and tried these ideas out and then published them and then talked about them on, on the DIY stomp box forum and then disappeared. <laughs> you know, he just like, okay. he just changed his mind. He's just like, I'm not into this anymore and moved on. You know, sometimes I kind of wonder what happened to him, you know? Right. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I mean, uh, the idea of, of somebody losing interest in such a thing seems pretty far out. Yeah. Um, you'd think that would be a lifelong obsession. Maybe, but his, his website was very prolific. Like there was a lot of circuit snippets. There's probably like 50 ideas there, you know? And they they run the gamut too. They do a lot. They go a lot of territory from like boosts and overdrives to filters to, you know, kind of phase shifters to like he did a bunch of different fuzz face like variations like fuzz pedals. And then there was a lot of ideas like the ugly face is one of his ideas, you know. So there's a lot of like and this pulse width modulator like there's a lot of weird like noise synthy ideas, you know. Super creative guy like great ideas, you know. But he never made 
as far as I know, I don't, I don't ever remember seeing a picture of an actual pedal that he made. Like he right. never made a product. He never made like I don't know that he actually ever put anything in a box, you know. <laughs> like I, you and, know. It, and I wouldn't imagine that there's any like uh, anything tying his ideas to you know something that you might hear on a recording. Like you, you'd never like these ideas never made their way into like the hands of, uh, you know, like Neil Schoen or you know Eric Clapton or whoever, you know. Um, it sounds question. like kind of just experimental. Yeah, good question. I don't know, actually. Maybe, you know. You know, I think a lot of people kind of mined his his site for ideas. So a few people published a few things. I think even JHS published a, a pedal or produced a pedal that has a Tim Escovito circuit in it. I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. Devi okay. Ever, I think, did a few of them, right? I built a few, like I built a bunch of his pedals. They're good. I built a bunch of ugly faces. I built the um, punch in the face, the jinx, the, um, they all have these goofy names, you know? All there pedals have like goofy names. Driver. I built the Fet driver, you know? Like he had a lot of good ideas, you know? It's. I mean, the, the really, the more far out a sound is, like the ugly face, you know, the, the less likely that you're going to see like a famous name on it, but... Um... There's, we were talking about it last week because we were talking about expression pedals. There was that um, Ranger effects, that um, that British company that makes the weird, uh, they have a pedal that you pour liquid in it, and then it analyzes the liquid and it it uh, shapes your distortion tone based on the you know the the viscosity or the you know darkness of the liquid or whatever, and. Um, and then the the other one, it was kind of like an ugly face, but it had that weird little flat, round switch on it. You know, like the outboard switch for yeah for timing the the filter or something. I'm not sure what it what it does, but uh, yeah, it looked, um, like it looked like it had some kind of tactile thing. So like a, it was like a pressure sensor. You know, it was just a disc, but you could step on it and it detected like how much pressure was on it. And then it would, it would change the effect, you know, or it can right. something on the effect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Our friend Dustin has one of those, Does um, he like the, it? one of the ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he uses it mostly with his, his synth. Oh, okay. I can see that. Uh, I think he said that that pressure think... pad is kind of more of like a, you know, it's like, it seems weird to put it on the ground like to have it on your pedal board it's yeah. more of like a thing to have on your you know on your desktop yes yeah, synth people like like them some some ex, some guitar pedals boy oh yeah well like i was saying this thing the um the um the uh the phase or the system for echo what is it called the system for echo yeah the um otherwise known as the digital delay it's great with the with the micro freak yeah yeah, delay is great, is like a great effect. And like four seconds is pretty amazing. Like that's like a lot of delay. Right. You know? And having the tap tempo, you can actually time it with the, you know, with the LFO. So um, yeah. you can double it or, you know, have it or whatever. Have, H-A-L-V-E. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Nice, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good pedal, you know? I kind of like that one. I don't, I haven't used it recently, but it's pretty cool. You know, I do see it like really lending itself to synthy stuff for the long, having the long delays, you know? Yeah. Try it out with your, with your Euro rack. See what yeah, you maybe, think. Maybe I'll do that. You know, I have another delay though, that does like, I forget how long it does. It does seconds. It does like a lot of, I like it's a Euro rack module that does it. Oh, okay. It's actually got two delays in it. Like there's two of them. And then they do uh, they do pretty long delay. I forget how many seconds, but it does a pretty long delay. Okay. So I already got a delay, you know. Um, but yeah, I love I love me some delay. It's good, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, Brendan just sent me a video of a guy playing a, a micro freak and a guitar with a lot of delay on it. I think it was. I don't remember what device it is. It's like one of those big pedals with a lot of knobs on it. You know, it's kind of, you know, modern delay. And uh, 
it's kind of the opposite of what I do where I, you know, kind of play like a regular, like distorted guitar with a super delayed um, synthesizer. But um, yeah, maybe you could, you could use your, your echo with the, uh, with a guitar and, and, you know, Euro rack uh, ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that'll be this week's song. <laughs> hey, I haven't heard your song yet. How, how did your song go? Tell me about the song. Um, well, I started out with kind of a fuzz, um, you know, fuzz driven um, progression. That was, you know, the genesis of the idea. And then um, I ended up putting so, some kind of like, kind of like a, a what do you call those movies? That movie, like a Halloween or Friday the 13th, one of those kind of like where the, it's got this kind of chimey, uh, psycho sounding uh synthesizer um and it just you know i just kind of like made my way in it um and i ended up using the the echo with the guitar at the end just to kind of um drive the point home um as kind of like the intro and outro but it's still all fuzz nice. fuzz and delay it's all i used Did, oh so so was it all guitar or did you use micro freak I use the micro freak for one track. Okay. And I actually um, use the um, arrangement track and then I recorded um, separate uh, arpeggios for each section in the, um, in the track using the, the micro freak. It's not perfectly in time, but it seems like it's okay. Like I was going to use your idea and actually move the track. So it was perfectly in time, but at the you know when when i got down to it i just didn't feel like it was necessary yeah yeah you know i think like i i saw something on the internet i was trying to look up some stuff about mixing and mastering you know and i didn't really learn a lot there maybe i gotta study it more but um one of the things the guy was said in this video was that he's like you know what in the end just use your ears yeah so you know like always just like if something doesn't sound right you know like then it doesn't sound right fix it you know like but then he's like yeah and then there's these rules and things you can follow but always like just listen you know well yeah the so, rules are like, like shortcuts sounds, yeah yeah so if it's yeah exactly right so if it sounds good you know then you should just stick with it you know yeah yeah one one um problem that i that i encountered and this probably is going to go back through you know like all of my projects is that i realized after i'd recorded the synthesizer that i had detuned the micro freak to um 432 because i was hanging out with dan <laughs> dude you know dan, i was thinking we should get dan in on the weekly song i know yeah we should totally do that yeah i mentioned it to him um okay, good. yeah i'll see I if just, i can get him on board after about, the holidays i've been thinking about dan like last week i was like oh, we gotta get dan to do this yeah it'd be great I, it'd be good for him yeah but I had to tune all my guitars to 432 to get through the song because I'd already oh, kind of wow. decided I was done with the, the synth. Yeah. You, you know, we were speaking of garage band ideas and tips, right? Remember we were talking about, um, you know, playing something and then just cutting it together to pick out the best parts, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I took a slightly different approach this time. I got my basic backing track down, right? So it's, I did like an eight bar blues, you know, or, you know, I just, I like, that's kind of been a thing I've been exploring. So I, I did an eight bar blues and then, um, you know, just as a chord progression. And so I recorded the guitar riff, like the rhythm riff, and then I recorded the bass riff and, the, and put it with the drums, you know, when I got that all in place, then what I did is I, I looped an eight bar section and then I played like I just, you know, improvised over the top of that. And I just kept kept it running. And I swear I must have done 32 takes. Right. So it's like wow. when I was done, it said 32 tracks. Right. And then what I did is I went back and I listened to to them and I picked out like three that I thought were good, you know, um, and so I, and you know what it was, is it was like the first three or, you know, in the first five takes, right? So mm -hmm. the first ones were always like better than the later ones, right? So, um, 
you know, so I, I deleted all the other ones. I was like, forget it. Those are just gone. And I just took the three that I, that I wanted to use, but they were still imperfect. So then what I did is I, I listened to them. I was like, okay, this is okay. It's the idea is good, but it's the, the performance is imperfect. So what I did is I looped that section. So I had, I had three, three eight bar sections, right? So I took the three pieces, the three eight bar you know, improvis improvised sections that I liked and I spread them out on the timeline in the three eight bar areas, right? And then I looped over each one of those eight bar sections and played it over again and practiced the riff until I got it right and I fixed the bad parts, you know? Nice. So it was kind of like, technique. it was kind of like I, I, I just improvised to get ideas and then I found an idea that was good and then I fixed that idea and made it work, you know? And then I practiced it a few times and then I kind of smoothed it out, you know? And that actually, it kind of was good. It was a good way cool. to get things happening, you know? Yeah, I might try that on this week's song. Um... Cause I, I, I haven't been very patient with the, uh, the track, you know, the, uh, the take, what do you call that? The, you know, the, the multi-tracking take editor thing. Yeah. I usually just go, go with a single performance Yeah. rather than, than slicing it all up. But I like that idea of finding your best ideas and then laying it out into the, into the, the composer. Yeah, yeah, it was it was good. It was really good because I was like, ah, you know, like I'm not thinking of it. Like if I did one take, it wasn't good, you know. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll practice it a few times and then pick out the take that I think is best, and then I can practice or fix that take. Like, you know, it would have been pretty good. Like, because I was just improvising, you know. And then I was like, oh, that would have been pretty good if I had done this change cleaner or if I had done the turnaround tighter, you know. Mm -hmm. right or if right at the end if i if i added something right there that was missing you know yeah would you say that um through doing this this exercise of a song a week that you're playing has gotten more fluid yeah i think it's i think it's good practice yeah for sure it was a little bit like practicing with the band so yeah, you the band, let's play the song again. Never replays the whole thing. But what was easier is I could get the band to play just eight bars, like you know, instead of the whole right. song. You know, because like no, the band doesn't want to just practice that one section over and over again. You know. <laughs> yeah, you need to play with a band that's willing to practice. You yeah. Know, practice, you know, going over a section. Yeah. So so that's okay. So you know, it was good. It was good. Like I because I, I didn't like I didn't have any ideas at first, and then I was like, okay, I'll just make up a bunch of stuff and just kind of play it. And then then I had some ideas, and then I worked on those ideas, you know, and that and that was kind of a good workflow this time. Excellent. You know, and then there's an outro riff. I think I played that five or six times, and then just took the best one, and that was that. You know, I was gonna go replay that today, and then I was like, ah forget it. I'll just keep it. It sounds okay. And then, and then I, cause I had, I wanted to also like kind of mix and master stuff, you know, and, and export everything. So. Yeah. I didn't save any time for mixing and mastering. So um, I'm going to try to do that this coming week. Yeah. I could have used, I think this song could have used an intro, like something at the beginning that was different. Cause I just start in right on the main theme, you know, but if I had like a little intro riff, that would have been good, but I couldn't think of anything in it. You know, did, nothing popped into my head for that. So I just, I left it off, but that would have been a, an addition, but that's okay. You know I mean? It's like, it's just like getting the song done in a week. So I think this is pretty complete, mm -hmm. even though it's not perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm looking for, forward to listening to the whole thing. I just started listening to the, the intro. Um, you know, sometimes I don't want to listen to yours before I've finished mine because uh, I don't want to get, <laughs> you know, the ideas mixed up. Yeah. 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 Don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I was talking to Brendan, you know, it was funny. I, I was talking to Brendan. He was like, well, I posted my song last week's song to SoundCloud. I thought Brendan's song was pretty good last week. I was like, yeah, yeah. He put really some good. effort into it. Yeah, it was it was nice. And then he's like, yeah, then my my dad and, and my relatives were listening to it on SoundCloud. So he's like, now I'm nervous about putting more music up there because people are following me on SoundCloud. <laughs> but then I was like, you know, Brendan, you know, if you take that as your attitude, then you're going to have like one song on SoundCloud. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, like, if, like, what wouldn't they be more impressed if you had a whole collection, like you had 52 songs on SoundCloud, you know, like, and then if some of them weren't very good or people didn't like some of them, like they, they'd like some others, you know, like. 
I, I I agree. I think the fewer songs that you have, the less material you have, the more scrutiny those songs are under if they, you know, <laughs> than if you had many. Yeah, right, you know. So I mean, I the Beatles, they had a lot of really good songs, but they, they do have some songs that I, I have to say, like, if they yeah. <laughs> had come out and their only song was Rocky Raccoon, they would not have been, you know, the, the best <laughs> band in history or whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> the Beatles. Dude, that's like hear hearsay, you know, like you can right. get yourself in trouble. Don't post that to the internet. <laughs> well, I just said it and we're going to post this on the internet. You, get, so, you like, get blamed on Reddit for that kind of talk. <laughs> oh, I know. Somebody's going to say like Rocky Raccoon is my favorite song by the Beatles. I'm sure it's somebody's. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lid for every pot, as they yeah, say. Right? <laughs> sorry so speaking of have you listened to any music this week oh good one uh what did i listen to i listened to something the other day i didn't really listen to a whole lot this week but i listened to something i walked to the store and i put the headphones on but now i can't remember what it was she you know what i think i did is i i listened to the cars oh that's good <laughs> I, which, I like which album uh, you know, I kind of have this best of album, so I just listen okay. to the best of, you know, I just skipped to Good Times Roll and then I listened from there on, you know, mm -hmm. and then I listened to um, uh, Million Miles Away by the Plimsolls. Oh, that's a good song. Yeah, I like that guitar. I was trying to, because, you know, I was doing kind of the spy theme, but that that riff kind of has a cool spy theme kind of feel to it. And so I was trying to get some inspiration their song is is pretty good it's like yeah. that's a really great song you know yeah well it's a good thing because they only have that one song <laughs> really i haven't heard anything else yeah, I'm i mean sure. i've only heard one song by the from souls but uh i'm oh, sure I, they have others you know like they're, they're hardcore better, fans that one's so good you know yeah yeah it wasn't in like um um it was in a movie with nicholas cage or something i can't remember yeah um, but uh, yeah, I um I listened to a bunch of things this week, all all in one day. I was uh, walking to work in the rain, and I was like, kind of irritated. So I was like, I need to go and listen to some uh, some sleep. Of course, I listened to Dope Smoker. I was like, nice. it's a good day for doom metal. So um, after that, I was like, well, I gotta gotta put something else on that you know the good follow up. So I listened to uh, uh, Elder. I don't know if you've heard them. They were, they're pretty cool. Um, they're from Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, and then I listened to Ohm. And I think oh, they're I also, they're, they're from California, aren't they? Yeah, one of the guys is, uh, I think the bass player is from Sleep. Oh, okay. That's like that probably why the they're like people who like Sleep, like Ohm. Yeah. Um, and then I listened to Black Sky Giant. I haven't heard um, of them. I can't remember um, uh, where they're from or anything like that, but they were pretty cool. And then there's an Italian doom metal band called Demonio. Oh. Which I probably means a demon in Italian. I don't know. Oh, and I also listened to a song by Bong Wizard. Um, it was. It wasn't really for me. They had kind of a Cookie Monster voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have but you the good heard, name. Have you heard um, UF, UFO Mammut? Um, I've heard of them, probably from you. I think maybe you um, yeah. recommended it. Um, they're they're kind of an Italian psychedelic doom metal, you know. So if you're into the Italian, just because you're if you're into the Italian doom metal, like I I'd, I'd put them on your on your your watch list because they're they're pretty good. Okay, I'll have to make a point of checking that out. I think I probably did listen to it after you brought it up on the show, but um, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. If you work in retail, it's a good good week for uh, for doom metal. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Okay, cool. Hey, you got me. What, what are you working on this week? Well, I got my new soldering iron, so I've got all kinds of projects. I'm going to, I can't reach it now, but you know, the, the plywood guitar, I'm going to put some better pickups in it and I'm going to change the bridge. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish soldering up my bass 
and if I can get to it, I'm well. No, actually, I can't. I, I ordered a new uh, standby switch for my Gretsch, so I'm going to um, put that in once I get it. Oh, and I ordered a uh, a Bigsby for my uh, uh, my tester guitar, an actual uh, not actual, but it's a licensed Bigsby instead of the um, fifteen dollar eBay. Bigsby wannabe. I, I got to show you this. This is the tremolo that's on this guitar right now. Uh -huh. it's, it's, you know, it's it's fifteen dollars, so you can't really expect too much. But it just it doesn't have a resting place, so it just sort of floats. Oh. Where, um, you know, as a Bigsby, it it doesn't just float. It's kind of it has a, a like a backstop to it, yeah. so this thing you're you're definitely going to go out of tune if you if you dive bomb on it, huh. and it's got a cheap spring. So I, I decided yeah. even though this is my tester guitar, I'm going to put an actual licensed Bigsby B500 on it, and um, and yeah, it'll be a, a lot better. Oh, that's interesting. So do you, do you, what do you think the problem is? Because it looks like the configuration looks like a big B. So what's different? Like, what's the secret sauce there? Is it just the spring? Um, they just got it. The spring doesn't have enough tension in it or something. No, it's not the spring. There's, um, I don't know, there's something about a, an actual big B. Hold on. I'm going to try to reach this guitar. I don't know. This this one just always returns to the same place. Uh -huh. So I mean, you yeah, um, you don't really. Yeah, I pulled the spring out of the socket, but um, yeah, this this is a, an actual not licensed, but an actual Bigsby, and it's really great. So it works good. Yeah, huh. that's interesting. I'm just kind of wondering, like, why. Like, cause maybe that cheap one, maybe, you know, you could replace a part or adjust it or something and make it work well, you know? Yeah, could be. I'm thinking that maybe there's something in here that, um, I don't know. I don't know. I have to study it. Yeah. I'm not really sure why, but. Yeah. Cause I have a, I have a guitar with a Bigsby in it. It's that Devo guitar. Right. You know, it's like the LeBay copy. Mm -hmm. And it has, it says Bigsby on it. So I'm assuming it's licensed, you know, right? Um, if not original, right? I don't know what, right? But but uh, it has like in, I noticed because I was playing that guitar this week, the pivot has little bearings in it. Like, you know, like those skateboard kind of sealed bearings. So that mm -hmm. would actually help the motion of it. You know, like it would, you know, be smoother. It wouldn't bind on anything, you know? Right. So I don't know if that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a video about it when I replace it, and explain why it's, why it's, it may be better to spend a hundred dollars on your, on your tremolo, than fifteen dollars, on this eBay yeah. special. Yeah, but that would be kind of cool if you if you could figure out like why, you know, and if you could fix it or adjust it, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like a Bigsby, you know. Yeah, I just I feel like it. It doesn't always return to the same place. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, it, like you get it goes out of tune. Mm -hmm. Problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'll do a comparison video on um, on why you know on on this versus the actual licensed Bixby. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, how about you? What are you going to work on this week? That's a great question. I think I'm going to finish building this four zero six nine board right here and then um, test that out and see how that sounds and see if this board works. It should work, hopefully, right? Um, and then um, I'm going to finish building this pulse width modulator and see if I can get this working. So these two projects are for this week. Um, and then and then the song for this week. So I guess, oh, yeah. song, you know? Yeah. Do you have any ideas for the song as far, as far as the uh, limitations or um... Things that you want to try, like um, 
we've talked about that before, like having a, like, uh, some kind of constraint that you. Oh, that's a good one. You know, um, we, we talked about that and I had suggested like, oh, try doing the AABA form. You know, it's kind of a simple idea, but it's mm -hmm. in song form. I kind of almost did that this week. My song is more like AABA. <laughs> it's like four, you know, three A sections instead of two, you know, right? Okay. It's basically like two parts, you know, A and B. So I don't know this week, maybe I'll do that. Or maybe um, I like that idea of doing every part different, but then you got to have more ideas. <laughs> right. Yeah. Look like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G song, you know? <laughs> right. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. You know, that's a good question though. If I think of something, I'll suggest it, you know? Um, All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. As long as I'm not too entrenched in, in my own idea by then I'll, 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 I'll jump on board. Yeah, yeah. So let me think about that. If I think of something, I'll do it. Yeah, I haven't started yet. So I got to think of some songs or some ideas. I, I have a bunch yeah. of, like I told you, I, I have all these little snippets of GarageBand stuff. And so I just went through those and I organized them last week. And so then I picked one out for last week's song to work on. So I think I'm going to do that again. I'm going to look through there and see if I spot something that is worth working on, you know? And then very uh, good the song of the week, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a busy last week of the year. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, cool. Well, we'll 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 talk again next week, right? Yep. Yeah, and if you're if you're watching this, uh, thank you for watching, and um, have a happy new year. And um, yeah, post your songs if you've got, you know, if you're keeping up with us on the song of the week, we'd love to hear it. Oh yeah, yeah. Send us the send us your music. We want to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you know, one last thing. You know what? I I was I just remember the other thing I listened to this week was Black Noise Radio. Black like, Noise Radio is that a band? No, it's like uh like a podcast, but it's a guy. He, it's it's actually like B L K underscore or B L C K underscore noise you know, but it's okay. like, it's just a podcast and the guy, he just collects a bunch of like random electronic music and just plays it. Oh, cool. You know, okay. Send me the, send me the, the, the URL. I'll post it in the, okay. in the description. Yeah. Yeah. He's on uh he's on Bandcamp and he's on um, Apple um, podcast. Right. So it's just like, he does an hour long podcast. It's almost like a radio show. He, so he just, he kind of just says something every once in a while and then he plays a few tracks and then he says something and then he plays a few tracks, you know? Cool. Yeah. It sounds like a good format. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all electronic. So it, it was, and it was kind of good. Like he curates some pretty good stuff, I think. Like, so, um, so I was enjoying that the other night. You know? And it's weekly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll he check it out. Another he at the beginning. I watched the. I listened to the first um, podcast for the Black Noise Radio, but he said he had another podcast, and I forget the title of it. But he was like, "Yeah, I did this for 13 years, and now I'm starting this new one." You know, but he's like, "It's the same format." You know, so. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. I'll, I'll send it. All to right. You. Awesome. Okay. Signing off. See you All later. Right. Peace, y'all.